I want to understand if people are really driven by money or whether they are predominantly driven by their colleagues. What you can take away from my research is understanding the preferences of the people, understanding how people make decisions in the workplace, when they have to choose how hard they work, when they have to choose how much they want to impress their peers, when they are worried about being pushed or favoured by certain people compared to others. So most of my research is focused on how the memory is organised and how people answer questions in surveys and how more recently it's been on how they process health advertising. People inherently suffer from a problem that they think they're special, they're impervious to advertising. If they see an ad for AIDS they think it's meant for their friends, neighbours, not for them. Studying memory helps me try to isolate tactics to get people to pay more attention to the ad because it could be meant for them. The question is, why do people behave ethically or unethically? And why do some people behave ethically and some people don't? When people see an ethical issue, it's actually different parts of the brain are activated. You can show this neurologically. There is a physiological basis to ethical decision making and it's very different from what happens when people are making decisions about standard business strategy or marketing. I mostly study what might be called operations management from the perspective of an investor, which is very different than what people normally do in operations management. One uh, example, I think, of what we do, uh, what I do in my research, is to determine what fixes an investor can make when he or she invests in a company. I'm really, I'm really interested in the way that Kind of the nature of employment's changed, the way that we have to build our careers across lots of firms has changed. What I study is the way that careers and employment relationships are changing and some of the consequences of some of the new employment relationships, particularly things like independent contracting and consulting, are for workers and for the firms that are using them. Once you take somebody out of the traditional employment relationship, what really changes? And so I've been trying to understand that both by looking at, well, do these firms actually use them in ways that are very different from regular employees? and also are different people going into these kind of non-standard arrangements than um, regular employees. I've always loved deep questions and their applications. My research uses the tools of, of economics and psychology to investigate consumer credit. Most recently we've been examining the impact of access to high-cost credit like payday loans on bankruptcy, crime and divorce. When the entrepreneur starts his company there's a lot of uncertainty about this, this company's future prospects. The entrepreneur is learning gradually over time about, uh, about the quality of, of his or her company. And, and depending on what, what, what the entrepreneur learns, well, that's going to affect the, the entrepreneur's decision whether or not to take the firm public. One thing that I'm going to do that I'm particularly excited about is bringing in some, uh, some venture capitalists uh, that have formed relationships already with Wharton and get them into the classroom, get them talking to the students, uh, so that they can, they, can, they can hear about venture capital from the real pros. Uh, what's a very important part uh, of, of our work as a researcher is to first uh, identify an, uh, an important and interesting question. I try to focus on the difference between uh, risk that investors face when they make decisions and the ambiguity. And if you look at the current situation in the financial market, there's a lot of ambiguity because there's a lot of information coming out and people, they simply don't know now how to interpret this information. They don't really know how to link this information to fundamentals. My research mainly focuses on the empirical modeling of firms' uh, strategic behavior and their decision making. I try to um, use the data from the washing machine industry and to explain some of the industry regularities. For example, the number of firms grows much faster than the takeoff of sales. This is just one phenomenon. And we will also see some interesting patterns of price change and uh, industry quantity change. This is just one example. So we play with puzzles and we try to find solutions to problems to solve real business problems. And I think this process is really rewarding and exciting. Broadly speaking, I'm interested in the impact of public policy on consumer welfare. So I'll give you two examples that I'm working on. The first project is a, a project on residential desegregation in Singapore. And the second project is a field experiment in, uh, in Eastern Indonesia. The, the Singapore project is trying to measure what are the causes of segregation and what are the costs when we are trying to reallocate people. 
and the I Indonesia project is trying to look at what are the kinds of policy designs that will have real impact on food security. I would really like for my work to have some policy impact. My recent paper focuses on studying these interaction effects between firms uh, in the shopping center context. So I'll look at all the shopping centers, mostly regional shopping centers in the United States, and I focus on the decisions of major department stores, such as Macy's, JCPenney, Sears, etc., to uh, co-locate in the same mall. Basically, I try to understand why a given shopping center is configured the way it is uh, by thinking about how the firms beforehand thought about which, which um, competitors would be more uh, likely to influence them positively and negatively as well. I mean, if you don't embrace technology, uh, you are likely to be lagging behind. Even if you are the most uh, mature industries, you think of mining, construction. And so, you know, I make a case that each firm, whether it's a firm that makes a table or a chair or a light, I mean, there are some important technology strategic choices that these firms need to make. And not all choices work in the way that firms intend to. And what I do is to sort of look at the history of technologies and look at which firms capture more value and why. I work on knowledge flows in large multinationals, basically understand how multinational companies source knowledge around the globe. I'm trying to understand how can, can they identify those sources of knowledge. So for example, I'm looking how European companies go to Silicon Valley and how they establish what they call technology scouting units. And what they do there is they try to find out emerging technologies that they don't have in Europe. And I'm trying to understand what's this process of technology scouting.